Hey guys, it's Sonya from Junk Monkey. I am fueling up because yes, today is a paint day. Thank you for joining me here. The last time I had my hands in paint, I was halfway across the country and today I am fishing out everything that I pack with me to take me to take with me to the crafters convention and today we're putting it to use here. So as you guys pop on, say hello. Tell me where you guys are watching from. I'm gonna do some banana bucks today and you know what that means. $20 for somebody out there who shares this video, type share below, shares the junk monkey love. Hey Joy, fancy meeting you here girl. Karen, how are you? And Helen and Kaylee, dang all the tribes here today. So I gotta tell ya that uh, this is the project, the brownie frownie project that we're gonna get into today, okay? So, I am excited. I always get excited before I get to put paint on something that's brownie frowny because I know already the kind of transformation that the power of paint can get, right? And so if you've got a like, you know, I'm gonna show you today when you watch me do what I'm doing here with this door in my shop, as you guys know, if you followed me that we just actually took over the top um, half of the building, it became available. And I am in, this is like a little apartment in here. And so you actually have seen us cook right here on the stove. And right now there's just like some blah, beige walls some blah quote me on that blah and uh yeah so it's and the door the brownie frowny door can you see how like the trim is all wonky it doesn't even like go to the bottom down there seriously i was like standing back looking at this going what the heck all right somebody used what they had right that's okay because I'm a low maintenance kind of girl and I'm a thankful girl and I'm just thankful we have a door. You know what I'm saying? So this is the door that actually leads to the restroom that adjoins right off of the kitchen right here. So in my master plan, knowing that you can do amazing transformations with paint, I'm gonna paint it. And so right now, there's like this, this blue color that's been carried all the way through the place here. I'm over it, I gotta tell you that, right? Plus what doesn't help it is the fact that this door is all kind of like put together What's the word out there that you call it when, when things are all like put together? You know what I'm talking about? Like, uh, you know, just kind of like, you know, wombie caddis, you know, what's the word that you use in your area? But yeah, so a little bit of everything, the trim is all made up of like a mod podge of pieces. Don't care. So I'm gonna show you a trick today and that is paint the whole darn thing one color, okay? Even if you have pieces that, that don't even make the full connection. Because when you have pieces like this, you've got the blue, you've got the raw wood, you've got, I don't know what this is, like some golden trim, then you got your brown door. Your eye has seen all those different parts, okay, that makes up this door. And it ain't looking so great, all right? So now we are gonna put, because I broke a brand new spanking can of vintage white when I was over at the Crafters Convention. And uh, who saw the whitewash? that uh, we put on the faux brick that Scott had brought in for us. So go back and watch that. And by the way, I just uploaded a new vlog today. I was um, editing that today. So if you wanna see some behind the scenes, some fun, and you can guess how many cookies I had to eat this weekend, okay? Just saying, a shout out to uh, Tracy Lark that's on here, okay? And let me just tell you, a girl hooked me up. Girl was uh, somebody I, like you guys, I hang out with here online. She showed up and uh, she gave me a gift. And let me just tell you, when you watch that vlog tonight, when she gave me four more cookies, Ah, oh, moment on the lips forever on the hips, right, Tracy? I'm thinking of you today, girl. All right, now we're gonna work it off, though. So I've got my vintage white with me, and I am going to grab my shabby chip brush and go to town. Now, I went ahead and I put some tape off, okay, on the outside. I gotta tell you, I've done over, like, 70 sets of cabinets, and uh, I lo use lots of tape. You know, when you do something, like, a million and one times, you get really better at it, right? And you get to identify what works well and what doesn't. And so I will tell you that for my prep today, I used frog tape outer on the outside of the trim right here, but but true story, my plan is actually to paint the entire thing white. We're gonna speed paint it, get it done, because I'm a low maintenance kind of girl who eats cookies. Way too many cookies, okay? But true story, I'm a low maintenance kind of girl, and so I wanna be able to do things quick. I don't want it to be confusing. I want it to be beautiful, and I wanna use easy quality products to be able to get me to what I need to do, right? And so I'm gonna go vintage white all over this right now. Frog tape is my favorite tape, okay, when I when I tape off. But true story, I think later this week, Matt doesn't even know, so I'm not even gonna like yell it too loud, but I'm gonna wallpaper. I'm gonna like, you know me, like I love funky colors. And so this kitchen is not this big in my shop, okay? Blessed to have a kitchen though. Thank you, blessed to have a kitchen. So I do not complain, right? But we're gonna put some wallpaper on the walls this week, so stay tuned with me. Make sure so you don't mi miss my messages and my live alerts, because I was able to start those back up today. Just go to the top of my Facebook page and click the live um, message button there and type the word live, okay? And Pickles will alert you. So anyway, I'm gonna go wallpaper, some funky wallpaper, come shopping with me this week. But let's, you know, let's just get it done. And by the way, the other thing I like to use 
to prep with is Krug Cutter. Now I will tell you that this place has already been cleaned when we moved in up here. So not that long ago, about a month ago, this was all cleaned, but uh, Krug Cutter is my favorite way to go, okay? Because it's non-toxic, it's biodegradable, and if you're like me, you paint a lot of stuff and you're around a lot of stuff, it's nice to be able to work with um, products that you don't have to worry about, right? And that does a good job. And so, especially in a kitchen, you can see the stove, you can see the door, so you're gonna wanna like prep your stuff before you do that because grease happens, you know what I'm saying? All right, so yes, this is the brownie frowny door. If you don't know what happens next, this is this is all the good stuff where it happens. Hey Denise, I am glad I am back as well. All right, so let me get in place, all right, because you know I like to fling some paint, and uh, you know I'm gonna have to find a space here for my paint because, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll be doing squats in a moment if I don't find it just halfway up, right? So what's everybody out there doing today? Liz, you can get it at JunkMonkeyPaint.com, girl. JunkMonkeyPaint.com. Okay. By the way, I forgot to take the before photo, so somebody take the before photo for me. Right there, just like that, all right? Okay, so there we go, brownie frowny. Where should I start on this masterpiece? I am so excited. I am so excited. Let's let's just start with the trim, okay? So you guys know me. I'm gonna go for like probably a shabby distressed. I don't even know what kind of paint is on this door already. I really don't care because if I'm using my chalky style paint because it sticks to pretty much everything under the sun, it means that it's gonna stick to it, all right? So I don't get, sometimes I get questions from you guys and you're like, oh, do I need to know what kind of paint is underneath it? Do I have to worry if it's like oil paint or you don't know what it is? Girl, just grab a brush and go bananas, all right? There you go. So we're gonna do the blue trim. Now you're gonna start to see, maybe I'll do this in a way where I paint like one half of the door so you can see how ugly it was before we put the uh, paint on it, all right? And here's what I like about like when I look at this you know this does not seem like a big project and the reason why it doesn't is because I know how easy it is to knock it out so already do you guys see the difference of when this trim over here like I mean it's made up of four pieces over here somebody definitely had their had you know big ideas of being a carpenter maybe not the neatest job but that's okay because now by covering it over and painting it one solid color not just painting the door but by painting the trim that goes with it, now I'm making this one, you know, wood piece, right? And so my eye is not gonna be broken up and it's gonna feel and look a whole lot cleaner and just put together and the power of paint, baby, the power of paint. So this is kind of like, you know, when you, um, if you're, you have a space where you have like a chair rail, rail that goes halfway through your room, or you have wallpaper on the top half and paint it on the bottom, believe it or not, that actually breaks up your line of sight. And so therefore the room can feel smaller, not so taller. And the moment you paint it all one color, chair rail included, then you get just this beautiful seamless look, right? Oh, so awesome. Let's pretend there's like, you know, like a, a line down the middle just for fun i mean this piece over here actually comes out over the door it's like the door has an umbrella of its own i don't even know i don't even know but yeah this doesn't have to be a long hard project right so what's everybody saying out there connie how are you judith one of my retailers over but let me see do cannon right did i say that right judith did i say that right Guys, we've been so busy. We now have 22 retailers. We just started, you know, as you guys know, our paint grew um, grassroots. And uh, we used to hand make our paint. And now everything has just gotten so busy as you guys try it and love it. And everybody's falling in love with it all over the country. We are now, we now have set up 22 retailers. Today, we had a new retailer uh, come on board from Missouri. And so we have a few more people as well that are just getting set up. So I can't wait to announce those to you guys. But if you want to find out what retailers we currently have as the Junk Monkey Takes the Nation, just go to Junk Monkey Paint and click Find a Retailer, okay? And you can always get it online, of course, 24-7. And we ship out typically uh, within a day or two. And then it goes off to you on its merry way. And you have fun with it, right? Ooh, can you already see the difference? Like, look how nice that is, right? And this is just plain white, plain white. So if you like, if this was your pantry door, 
Girl, go paint it teal. Go do a fun color that makes you happy. Because at the end of the day, because like I told you, our paint sticks to whatever paint was on this door and on the trim, it's going to do the very same thing. It will stick to itself. So that means that if you want to have, like, you know, make yourself a blue door, and the next season you want it red, that's fine. Just paint over it. So, so easy. So I'm just doing one layer, and I'm using my shabby chip brush, which really gives me more of a distressed look. So, and that's what I love, right? So I'm thinking some funky, cool, whimsical wallpaper. Who's over wallpaper? Who's like, eh, it's not that bad. You know, what are you guys thinking? Do you like wallpaper? Are you over it? You know, it's kind of like making a comeback, right? And I know it's a pain in the badonk badonk to get it off, but it'll be so nice. It'll be so nice. Plus, it's just this wall and the next one that I'm looking to do I, in this space. And so, like, kind of like making a little accent corner because this is where we've been starting to cook to. You guys know I'm married to a chef, and so... I want to be able to like really jazz this area up so we can start doing some vlogs and really making it feel like a kitchen, right? So this, um, this little apartment serves us very, very well. What do you guys think so far? Can you see half the door already? Like seriously, Tess just got home. Oh, Rebecca, heck yeah we do. Find somebody over in California who wants to retail our paint. If you guys go to junkmonkeypaint.com, at the very bottom there's a place called um, Become a Retailer. And then we get lots of apps, but I promise we go through every single one of them. In fact, I've got a, there's a bunch right now I've got to go through after being back. These last two weeks have been crazy for us. We had the Fort Ligonier Days, which is like the biggest event that happens in our area. And our, and our shop is literally in the middle of it. And uh, then that last week, of course, we traveled and just got back on Sunday night from over in Illinois for the crafters convention so yes so if I haven't gotten back to you it's probably because I'm gonna be getting back to you if not this evening tomorrow as I go through all the applications from you guys guys from all of you guys um, but yeah we get back to every single one of you Whew. all right boy I like that I'm purposely doing one half of the door because I want you to be able to see the difference it can make when you paint your trim the same color as your door. Also how it can lighten and brighten. And you know I'm gonna be just doing some distressing, but look at that, already, right? Hey Kate, how are ya? Susan, let's see, Jen says, she'd wallpaper any day over painting a room. I know, I, I gotta tell you, I will paint doors and furniture till the cows come home. By the way, give me some hearts if you're liking that half, better than that half, okay? And we're not even done yet. But yeah, I know what you're saying, like, oh, I've painted walls too, and I, it is not my love, like, it is not, you know, thank goodness there are, you know, people that, you know, spice of life, right, everybody loves something, that's like I could never be a nurse, I don't like being around people um, who are bleeding, getting hurt, cut, I will, like, pass out and, like, have to sit down, Matt squashed his finger one time when he was a chef in, I think it was called the dumb waiter of the kitchen, and he almost lost his finger, and it was on the hand that he used, and so I had to take care of him. He was the one with like half a finger, and I was the one sitting on the chair trying to help him. Like, it was bad. Poor guy, I was like no use to him. You know, do we have any nurses on here right now? Shout out to you nurses and doctors, man. Phew, I will paint your furniture any day of the week if you uh, take care of stitches and all that stuff. Not me, right? Not me, I'm curious. Let's, let's do a poll. What do you do? What do you, you love being an ER nurse? See, look, there you go. How quick is that? Let's do a fun poll. What is your occupation? Put it below and let's see what kind of uh, occupations we have on here. Because just think about it. We probably have people that do everything under the sun. So yeah, so if you just need help, just be like, you know, come on to Junk Monkey Live and be like, you know, calling all nurses. What would you do if calling carpenters? You know what I'm saying? Dang. 40 years a nurse, wow. And you probably could do it with, there's probably nothing she ain't seen. There's probably nothing she ain't seen, right? Oh my gosh. You know, we go in and we have to, uh, you know, have our annual visit as ladies and all that sort of stuff. And we're probably like so shy. And those nurses and doctors are like, let's get it on. You retired? Yeah, absolutely. Stay at home, oh, that's the best job. <clears throat> 
That's the best job. You are a nurse, a doctor, sanitation engineer, a chef. You do it all if you stay at home, right? <laughs> you are a little bit of everything to everyone. You get to be a super mom. Too fun. Too fun. My son is now 18, graduated this year, and I am thankful for all the picnics on the rocks in the yard and all the sorts of stuff that we did. Good times for sure, right? And time just flies when you're having fun. Can't believe that we're already to like the end of October. Anybody else feel like that? Like I had to ask today what the date was. That's why I have a calendar where I can like look at the entire month because if I had to have a calendar layout where I only see like one week at a time, I lose myself like where I am in the month. I need to see the whole month view with like the holidays mapped out and you know, anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, that looks good. Teacher. Yes, hey Heidi. Got to meet Heidi from Butterfly Books this weekend. That was fun. Found out. You know what it's like when you go somewhere and you go, where are you from? Pittsburgh? What? We traveled out here to the middle of the country to find people from home. Couldn't meet them locally. Had to go halfway across the country. That's how I feel with my neighbors sometimes though. I go to, like to Walmart. We call the Walmart like the store of the mountain. You know, the mountain store. And uh because when you live out in the rural area, you know, you have to drive a bit to get to the closest bigger store. And uh, we're really out in the country. And when you go to Walmart, you get to see all your neighbors there. They all show up somehow in the produce section. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's go ahead and... Okay, so true story, I could have just went ahead and uh, taped off my doorknob, but I am not that kind of girl. I mean, I could do it if I really wanted to, but I'm ready. I'm willing to wing it and see what happens, all right? Because at the end of the day, by the way, Lysol wipes are my friend. You know what I'm saying? So I love to keep Lysol wipes with me as well because, or go grab some if you need some, because it's a great way. So, for example, if you painted around a knob and you accidentally got some on the knob itself, just grab your wipe or something like that. And of course our paints are water-based and so honestly even if you just have like some uh, soap and water to clean off, that's really easy too, right? Hey, thank you for sharing guys. We're gonna do $20 in banana bucks today for somebody who shared this video and hung out with us. Had some fun today. Ooh, I like this. Who's getting inspired to paint a door in their house? So this could be like your front door. This could be um, a pantry door. A bedroom door this could be I couldn't tell you how many times I painted kitchens and then um, the owner would be like what would you do with your these shutter you know these shutter doors over here that are for like my pantry I would paint them the very same color that I painted the cabinets and boy did it make a difference it looks so nice I mean I've done all kinds grays creams you name it and every time I'm like yep we did exactly what we needed to do we needed to paint that so I'm probably gonna do a little distressing on this door. Right now, this is just one coat with my Chevy chip brush. And I'm really thinking, you know how I love my Chevy roses? I'm thinking I'm gonna have to go find some really vibrant colored rose. Like, you can see my head wrap, right? Like, I'm even thinking like, I'm gonna go out and see what I can find. That's really cute. And, oh, it's gonna be so nice. So, so nice. Oh my gosh. Anybody see? I'm already thinking nice and thinking like kitchen and thinking uh, pioneer woman. Anybody love the prints and the colors and the stuff that she does? Uh, I love it. I kid you not, I saw a utensil um, like dish the other day for $8. I'm going to have to go back and get it because it's just, you know, I need one more piece of ceramic to be able to put my spoons in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Keep changing it out and going to something new. But uh, I did see today that she is now working with like Mattel Barbie and uh, there's a whole Pioneer Woman Barbie kitchen now. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? Laurie, just pop the metal ring off the door when you get to paint it. Yeah, you could do that too, absolutely. Me, I'm, I'm a low maintenance girl, so we're just gonna tape off and we're gonna paint. You guys, can you see the difference? Can you see it? Oh, so easy. So I can make this as solid as I want. This is just a quick brush over with one coat with my shabby chip brush. 
Remember, my shabby chip brush gives me distressed looks because it's a harder bristle brush, okay? So what that does is um, it allows peekaboos of what the underside color is to be able to come through. So I want a little of that brownie frowny to come through. I'm going to do some distressing as well. We could do fun stuff like antique the door because it's got those inlays, right? So that is like license. Oh, license to have some yummy fun because you can really like let some um, antiquing go in there if you really, really want to. But I'll show you what I'm going to do with this door. I'm going to keep it simple. Simple and gorgeous. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Let's get this bottom corner. I know I'm kind of blocking it, but I've got this like small area here to work in next to the stove. So bear with me. Let me get this last corner here. Stick with me. Stick with me. Who's getting ideas out there? Now I have to tell you that imagine if I painted this door in black. You know because I'm using our chalky style paint that if I don't seal it, then I have a chalkboard. So right now if I had colored chalk, I could use this as a chalkboard. Which if you are thinking about doing this for a kitchen and you know you want to like do like a pantry door, you could, you know, what kinds of things could you write on it? Like I'm thinking you could use it for your honey-do list, you could use it for like, you know, what you need at the store, um, positive quotes, any, ooh, anything like that, right? So to be able to do it, look how nice that is. Deborah, I'm gonna seal it with our monkey shine. So I could go either way, but because this door leads to the restroom, it's right off the kitchen and, you know, things can, you know, like today I was frying some chicken up on the stove, going back to my, my keto regime, and uh, I wanna be able to clean it, right? Now what I'm doing right now is just taking my sand brush and going back over some of those areas to put a second layer on. And what that's going to do is I'm not fully covering it in, but it's going to make it look make it look a little bit more like, you know, like a little bit more heavier in some spots, lighter in another, giving it that warm look and just adding a little bit more character and interest to it, right? So I'm just going to add a little bit on here, extra. My first coat is like pretty much dry in spots, which was nice. I had a moment where I was like, did I leave my heat gun on the stage in Illinois? Yeah, but nope, we found it. Last moment, we found it. I had some help packing up, so you know what it's like when you like have other people helping you? And then you're like, oh my gosh, did they remember? They did. We're all good. So just adding a little bit of the white now all over the top of what I did to make it a little heavier in areas. Because think about like if you're going for a time worn look, um, you know, nothing ages perfectly, right? You're going to have spots that just have more wear than others, you know, that, that just naturally mother nature has lifted time, you know. Think about something being left outside and weather the rain has hit that part a little bit harder than another part or a little part was exposed so this is why I like to just go back over certain areas with our junk monkey and just make it look a little bit more interesting right all right what do you guys think so far who was here for the beginning who was here you know, for the Crimea River, Crimea Blue River. Do it like that. Do it like that. Woo! My gosh, guys, I'm not gonna have a shoulder left or a oven door. All right, you can still see that kind of drying over there. So, what I should do is just add a little bit more to the outside as well, just to go around real quick with my brush. So if you wanted to do full coverage, don't use this style brush. You'd want to use something that's a little bit more flowy and soft and the bristles are softer. So that way the paint loads on all of them and uh, it just spreads out more over your area, right? Because this bristle is hard, it doesn't uh, completely want to cover, which is what I want. 
Woohoo! Oh yeah! I am loving that. So when you go with a lighter color, this is how you get things to look brighter, right? If you feel like you have like a dingy space, just paint that sucker white, you know? And much like I always tell you guys too that if you have a smaller area, which this is just a tiny compact, what do, you, what do they call those places now when they don't want to call them small on TV? They call them micro spaces. Yeah, I, this is a micro space right here. Like literally on this side right here is where you would wash dishes. This is a stove and that is the door to the bathroom, right? Like really, really small, right? So I love it. I love it. Wait one second there. Perfect. I love that. All right, let me dry this real fast. A lot of these areas have already dried. I'm pretty lucky because there's a vent right below me. So, you know, our paint dries quickly anyhow, but the fact that you have some heat helping you, that's a very good thing. Now I'm excited for the next step that I'm gonna do. Yes, pretty nice, huh? So if you want to do full coverage, you could also use like a roller and go all over it, right? Like what I would do is actually just use a brush because the roller's not gonna get down in here in these inlays. But what you would do is just like use a brush for these parts and then roll over the door. But that, that's not really what I wanted, right? So I just went ahead with my shabby chip brush. You see it? And that's my favorite brush to use when I want this sort of look. Now you must let it dry. It's no fun watching paint dry. This is why I use a heat gun. This is going to be so nice. Right now we have the white against this like creamy wall, which I'm so over. And so imagine... I mean, look at my pink shirt. Can you imagine if we put a really fun wallpaper on the back of this? It would be so nice for this wall. So that's what we're gonna do this week. So stay tuned and follow this transformation. We're gonna do some distressing. So when I put down my, my, my coat and my half a coat, this just gets me part of the way. The, the really, for me, the, um, the exciting part starts to happen when I get to do some distressing. Do you see, I don't know if you can see, but all these inlays of this door, that is like waiting to be revealed, right? Big old Easter egg waiting to be revealed. So these would be perfect to do the antiquing in. If you are blessed with kitchen cabinet doors that have inlays and have some design onto it, People paid extra for that, right? A plain door with no bevel, beveling or any sort of cuts into it is gonna be much cheaper than a door like this that has some interesting uh, parts to it because it took a little bit more to build. So if you have those, if you find pieces of furniture that are interesting like this, take the time to like think to yourself, what could I do to really play that up? Sam block will just swipe the paint with it. So 
it gives you a different style of distressing and again makes it look really interesting to the eye, right? So we're getting there. We are getting there, right? You pay $5 for five cabinet doors. That's really good, right? Oh, you could do that, Anna. Yeah. You could find pieces. If you have a plain door, if you go to like a Lowe's or a Home Depot, you can find places that have the trim that you can attach. And then you, what you would do is just glue it on. You can use some tack nails to get it on. And then just like we started with this piece, you know how the trim was a different color than the door? If you're adding pieces on the door, it's not going to make a difference if you're going to paint it, right, all one color. Nobody's going to be able to know that. Nobody's, you know, unless you're going to tell them. That actually is uh, what's on my door downstairs at my shop. Did anybody see when I did the gray door downstairs? I did this, like, gray distressed black brown door. It's really cool. And uh, you can see that looks like there's, like, six, six or eight picture frames that were nailed onto it. When really, it makes the door look more ornate, but it was added after the fact, right? All right, we are almost done with the drawing, so we can begin with the next step. Thank you guys for sharing. Appreciate the love. All right, there we go. Oh, yeah. Heck yeah. Thanks, Elma and Tracy and Karen. I got to meet you, right? Heck yeah. Let's see here. Give me one second. Yes, Joseph. Actually, if you ever worry if you have, like, you're in a whole old house, and if you ever worry if anything is painted in lead paint, then um, you can actually buy tests if you go to, like, you know, the common stores that we would know, like the Lowe's or the Home Depot or something like that, and you can actually find that, and you can do a test if you're ever in a whole old home and you kind of just want to know for sure. All right, so there we go. Now what we're going to do is do some distressing. So I've got my medium sand block right here. And now we let the fun begin. Do you see how hard that paint is on there already? And I've pretty much dried it. This is why I tell people. Some people message me and they're like, hey, if I don't seal your chalky style paint, is it going to rub off? And sometimes I think that people think that you know, you think a chalk on a chalkboard if you rub against it, but it's not the same thing, right? So it is a chalkboard. If I wanted to get chalk right now and write on this, but it's not going to come off. I mean, I'm here with a sand block. So if you paint your furniture and you have friends coming over doing this to your furniture, you shouldn't be friends with them, right? But seriously, if you are doing something like a tabletop, or you're doing something that gets a lot of traffic, you're definitely gonna wanna make sure that you seal it because of the fact that you wanna make sure it doesn't get stained or things don't get stuck on it, you know, that sort of thing, right? Hey, Matt, would you get me another sand block? Downstairs. If I say hello to Matt, my partner in crime, he's in the next room. Guys, what do you think so far? Oh, the heavens opened up and the angels began to sing. I'm telling you, power of paint, man. You get paint therapy out of it. You get to make something beautiful. You know, I have a lot of people who come into my store here in Ligonier, Pennsylvania. I have a physical store, but I also have my online store. But physically, I get to talk to a lot of people who come in and I get to meet them in person. And, uh... They tell me that if you bought something that was, thank you so much, babe. If you bought something that was plain Jane and like compared to something that already has a distressed look on it, it increases the look like crazy amounts, right? You guys know what I'm talking about? The moment you look in a catalog and you see something that has a distressed look, um, it increases the cost so much. So if you have a plain door, or you, ha you want a distressed rocking chair or something like that, just get it and jump monkey it up and save yourself all those extra hundreds of dollars. And you really can't go wrong when it comes to the, the distressed look. Put your paint down, grab your sand block, and away to go. So on a scale of one to 10, I'm curious, what is your distress amount 
happy bucket level. Light distressing, heavy distressing, up for anything distressing. Curious to know what you guys, uh, what you love. Wow, isn't this cool, guys? Oh my gosh, I love it so much. This with some whimsical wallpaper is going to be the bee's knees. to visit he's like I like what you're doing with the place so by being here all these projects he doesn't have to pay for right so it's fun to be able to know that you can make things beautiful and not have to break the bank right all right okay I think we're done. Now I'm going to give you guys a tip here. Oh yes. I love it. Oh, I love it so much. I love it so much. I need to stand back, do a look and be like, hmm, is there any other areas I need to, to hit? I like it. I like it, right? Depends on the day. Yes. Nice. So, all right, so I'm pretty happy with that. Now I can just take a brush just to get some of the like dust off because especially in these areas here, when you sand, they can uh, collect all the, like the dust particles. So here's the part where you, you can decide, do I go over it with another level of paint? Have I achieved? Where I want it to be, this is your style. You have full control over that part, right? I'm just here to show you what I'm doing. All right, so somebody asked, are you gonna, are you gonna seal your distress door with monkey shine? I could, I could totally do it. So it would be so easy to do it, but I always tell you guys that, think about like, you know, if you're, you have pieces that are high traffic, so in this case, somebody's gonna be having their hands around the doorknob, right? The stove is right here, I'm gonna be, cooking something and it's going to get splashed on here. I want to be able to wash it more because it's more of a, you know, it's not a decorative piece. It's a piece we use every single day. And so also think about rings, you know what I mean? Like your rings will hit off the door and things like that. And so that's why I want to go with something that's going to give me better protection. So that is why I grab my banana peel, banana peel. And this is our top coat. So basically in the world of junk monkey, we keep it pretty simple. Right? You just pick your color. Do you want it to crackle? Really crackle and be spontaneous. Go with the milk paint. Do you want it to be uh, something more of a sure thing and then you can manipulate it to look with as much distressing as, as you want? Then use the chalky style paint. And then when it comes to sealing, well, is it high traffic or not, right? And so in this case it is, so I'm gonna grab my banana peel. All you have to do is stir it up and way to go. Now, for my brush, this is a dollar store brush, guys. I just tell you guys that I don't care what brush you use to put it on, let's be honest here, as long as you have something that's really nice and soft and flowy, okay? So this feels like, I tell you guys, find something that feels like a like a blush brush, you know what I'm saying? Something that feels really, really soft to your face, that's gonna be your best clue that you're onto something that's gonna give you a nice look. Because remember how I told you guys about how when I use my shabby chip brush, it's a harder brush, right? Can you see those hard bristles in there? Like they are hard bristles, okay? And so when, when you see how they're all like sticking out and doing all those things, because what happens is that's, if you wanna go distressed, use a brush like this because when it goes over your piece, the bristles, like it shows peekaboos. It doesn't give you full coverage. Whereas when you find a brush that is more softer, what happens is the bristles flow more and as a result, you get better coverage, right? So I don't want distressed poly. I want full coat coverage poly. And that is why I'm going to grab my banana peel. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? All right, let's go ahead and put it down. So I can start anywhere on this. Really is not gonna make a difference. You'll notice that when you put the poly on that it is a very uh, light, like a light white milky color. 
And that is so you can use it as a guide to know what you have painted and what you haven't painted. Now it's going over white right now, so it's not going to really make a hill of beans to you guys. You're not going to be able to see it. But just know that if you're going over color, that you're going to see it go on in a milky white color, but it dries clear. So you're going to be able to look and go, what have I covered in poly and what have I haven't, okay? What have I not? So right now I'm going all over with the poly. Do you see how what I'm not doing is staying in one spot and already I've done a lot of coverage? Because you don't want to keep swiping over your poly. You don't want to do that. It will make your brush strokes come out and stand out like a sore thumb, okay? So basically swipe it on in a light coat and move on to the very next area. You are better off putting multiple coats, light coats of poly on than trying to get it all on at one time. So if I feel like I wanna come back and put on a second layer of poly, I just let this first one dry, okay? And I'm gonna show you a tip as well for all you people out there who are polying over white, okay? So if you're using our Junk Monkey paint and you have our banana peel, I will show you a quick trick that will really make you happy and you can thank me later, okay? So we're almost done with this right here. Thank you very much, Vicki. Somebody says they like the light distressing. Totally. But here's the true story. If I, got, if I put this on and I think to myself, I think I want it more distressed or even less distressed, my chalky style paint is gonna stick on over the poly as well. So I could always increase the level of how solid my white paint is by just junk monkeying over even the poly because the chalky style paint sticks to, say it with me, pretty much everything under the sun. You're gonna be hard pressed to find something that it doesn't stick to. Something like a moving object or bubble gum, something like that, you know what I mean, that has movement to it. All right. Ooh, I like that. What do you guys think? Quick and easy. Slow and easy wins the race, right? Woohoo! I love it. Tracy, believe it or not, this door, this is the edge of the door right here. I was saying earlier on, this door is built kind of wonky. And right here, I can see the end of the door. It just has this like little finger gap right here underneath it. So it's actually all painted. Believe it or not, from my view, I can see the whole door just the way it's put together. But that's okay, because you can't, right? Now it looks like one cohesive piece, and that's what I was going for. All right, let's see here. Make sure. Now I go back and do a quick look and go, do I have any drips? Gravity happens. We all know about that. Let's just go back. You turn your back, and the next thing you know, you've got a little drip that came over the edge. So let's get that. Okay, all right, so I love it. I love it. All right, so here's my quick tip for you guys. Let me grab, because I'm in the kitchen. Let me grab something like this and show you what you could do. Okay, so this is drying right now, but in a moment, I'm gonna put over a second coat of poly, okay? And I'll show you what I'm going to do. Thank you, Shelly. Top fan Shelly in the house. Okay, Whew. all right, so here's what I'm going to do. I am going to find my paint. Well, let me explain it to you first. Let me just explain the secret to you first, okay? So I've got my coat of poly down, so it's protecting it right now, and it's drying, okay? It has a little bit of a sheen, but you're gonna find that it dries to a flat matte look, okay? And the reason being is because, the reason being is because um, if you're trying to imitate old looks, old looks are not shiny, right? And so if you want something super shiny, you're gonna wanna look for something that gives you a glossy effect. For me, I tend, you see, right? I did this shabby distress style. That is my style, and a lot of you guys who follow me love that as well. And so I'm gonna steer you towards using a matte sheen on top of uh, the flat matte paints that you use that we have because it goes together, right? Old things, I'll say it again, are not shiny. But I just put my layer of poly down right now, so I've got that layer of protection going. Now, this is my second layer I can put down, and this is where a lot of you guys will message me and you go, oh my gosh, how do I keep that last coat of poly like looking really nice and bright and vivid white, okay? And here's what you can do. Here is what you can do. You can go ahead and dump out the poly that you're going to need for your for your uh, door to cover it over, which is not very much. 
and you're also gonna grab a little bit of the same white that you used, okay? Now you don't wanna overpower the white paint that you have here into your poly because you need to keep it more of a consistency towards the poly end of things. Otherwise, you're getting too much into, um, you know, you're getting into too much of the paint side, okay? So truly, if you said to me, Sonia, could I paint and poly all at one time? You totally could. You could create an all-in-one paint for yourself with our products because they are made that strong. What that means is I put a little bit of white paint in here. Can you see it back there? Let's see. Can you see the white paint back there? So if you have something that you want to experiment with this on, you can totally do it. But this is how I use and create a, basically an all-in-one uh, paint and sealer for myself. My first coat is down. I've got my white paint in here. And now from there, I can go ahead and put my poly into it. But I want my poly to be, to definitely have more, um, I want to have more poly into it, right? More banana peel than white paint. And I'm doing this for my second coat. And what's going to happen is, what's going to happen is now I've tinted my banana peel in the same color white that I've painted it. Therefore, my banana peel is going to be more vibrant, okay? And that, my friends, is how you keep, that's a professional secret, and how you keep your last coat of poly looking to be able to protect, but also to be able to um, keep it nice and vibrant white, right? So now I can hit it wherever I want to be able to hit it with this second coat, go all over, do what I got to do, right? And I really should be using my other poly brush because I, let's go back to this one. Because yeah, as soon as I started using that, I'm like, yeah, missing my good poly brush, which is really only a cheap poly brush, but it works like a charm compared to the other brush that I used to paint it on with, right? So now what I would do is just go ahead and put my second coat of poly all over. No, it won't, because remember, Jamie, that your poly dries clear. And so you're only putting a little bit of paint into it, just enough to trigger it to stay white but you don't want to overpower, right? So I'm even talking like just put in like a, like seriously put in, let's see, maybe like a tablespoon to two tablespoons. For a project like this, I would just put in like maybe uh, one tablespoon. That's all I would need because, you know, there's not a whole lot of uh, poly that I need. So my mixture stays with more poly than the white paint. And then honestly, if you mess up and you're going like, darn it, I put too much white in my poly and uh, it's taken away some of my distressed edges very lightly, just take your sand block and go over it and pull them back out again. But at the end of the day, you'll have a much more vibrant poly piece if you do that trick. So there you go. So I love it. I'm going to finish going all the way around it and with my poly piece and it's done. And this is the kind of stuff that I love to do, right? Seriously, before supper and... This is why our paint was born, because you saw what it just did so quick. So I always say that I love to do projects quickly. I love to be able to do them beautifully. I love to use quality products to be able to get me to where I need to go. And I don't want to have to feel like I need to buy a million different things to be able to get a beautiful look. And so, yay! So it's going to, you can see where it's, it's still got some shine because all those parts will have to dry. And then I'll get my before photo, put it up. But remember, this was this blue jean, god awful blue color, strips of different paneling that didn't even reach to the floor, and our brownie frowny door, right? And so now it's so cute. Phyllis, this is my paint shirt. So true story. I go to Walmart, and uh, so if I really like this shirt, I'll buy a second one of it. But I'm a thrifter, I'm a junker, and I'm a bargain hunter. So I tend to like look for uh, sweatshirts that are on the bargain uh, bin at Walmart. And then even if they're at a season, I'm like, dang! So I think I have four different designs of this shirt, and I got them for all like $6 each, right? So, heck, yeah. I'll cook for you if you do my painting. Hmm, that sounds good. That sounds good. I like to cook. Or you like to cook. I like to paint, right? All right, let me give away some banana books. Bucks. You guys were so awesome today. Thanks for hanging out. Whew. All right, that was a workout. And this is why I don't get to go to the gym, because I get my uh, my workout, right? Right here. Heidi, when you say ask me, won't the bristles fall out? What do you mean? Of what part? So I can help you out here. So I can help you out. All right. So my winner today is Christy Reynolds. Christy Reynolds for uh, joining and sharing this video. Message me at junkmonkeypaint at gmail.com so I can get you over that $20 um, coupon so you can shop online at junkmonkeypaint.com. Um, and we ship to all states. 
every day all day every day our friend Carrie should be coming through the door anytime to continue our uh, shipping for today so when I use my Chevy chip brush um, when I remember this is the important thing to do you see how there's this clasp on here sometimes when they make them in the factory it just so happens that they're not really uh, clamped really tightly so before I start when I remember do what I say not what I do just go ahead and pull the bristles out like tug on them because anything that wants to give will give and fall on the floor before you put it into your paint and start your paint job, right? So that's easy peasy way to go. The reason I don't get excited when I see brush uh, like um, brush hairs into my paint job is because I also distress. And at the point where I'm distressing, I'm also polishing my door, right? I'm polishing it because I'm basically sliding a sand block over the whole thing. So anything that's on there like impurities, um, brush hairs, if a fly decides to come and hang out with me and land on my paint, all those sorts of things, or the wind blows, the leaf gets stuck to it if I'm painting outside, I just save that to the end, right? So I don't get excited about that part. You know what I'm saying? The Karen, the bottom at the very, the part, the very, very bottom down here as a gray like um, piece that you walk over. So I'm just going to leave that gray. What do you call one of those things? Those are joiners. There's like little step of joiners. You know what I'm talking about, right? Ah, uh, T, one day, one day. Yes. Carrie says, take the green tape off. Let's see. I really didn't need to even. Uh, Put the tape on here now that I think about it. I mean, I'm, I decided I was going to go ahead and wallpaper it. Something funky. So come wallpaper shopping with me and I'll show you all the amazing stuff that's out and about right now. Yahoo! All right. I like it. And boy, doesn't it make like the, this area look a whole lot brighter and happier? And uh, so that's what I was going for, right? Yay! The threshold. There you go. Yes. Carla says, I've got an old wood door that is chipping like crazy. I want to make a headboard out of it. Oh, come on, Facebook. Show me the rest of that. Should I? Okay. Oh, should I use banana? That's all I can see. Should I been use banana? So what I would do is, yes, absolutely. So um, I'm just, I don't know if you mean you want to paint it. If you do, grab a sand block and um, get it off. The only thing is I will tell you that if you're using an old headboard and if it's chipping like crazy, do a test because like we were talking about way, way earlier on, a lot of times when you find stuff, that's a good clue. If you go out into a thrift store or um, a yard sale and you find old, old doors that are chipping like crazy, peeling off, that could be a good indication because that's just the way that lead paint acts. It chips. And so just do a check on that. But if it's truly just that way and it's just another, you know, just distressed in the weather and that sort of thing, then you're safe to take a sand block and disturb it and to go ahead and sand it and then seal it and way to go, right? So yeah, I'm very happy with that. Can you use our chalky style paint on paper? You sure can, yeah, absolutely. I use it in my sketchbook, on my canvas, on my wood planks when I paint, all that sort of stuff, so yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, Diane. I appreciate that. I think so too, right? Yeah. So you got a door that goes to your basement and you're tired of it. You know what I mean? You got a pantry door. You got a set of shutters in your kitchen right now and you just want to do something different with them. Put some paint onto it. That's all you got to do. And uh, it totally changes up the feel, feel of this place, right? So this is the time of year where we go inside and, um, you know, we look at each other inside and we've got Netflix too, but we look at all the things that need to go on because we just spent the summer outside playing around in the sunshine and frolicking in the pool, right? And so when you look around, just know that you don't have to rip things out. You can appreciate them for what they are. Just add some paint onto them and totally give them a new look, okay? And even if you want to change them out down the road, even just putting a little bit of paint onto it right now until you can get to that point where maybe you want to do a complete overhaul and it might involve some renovation you don't have to live with brownie frowny pieces I'm just telling you right now okay I'm telling you right now true story all right shouldn't the Carrie I don't know if you heard in the beginning but this is this this apartment was put together you know what I'm saying so there is a gray strip that grows goes on the bottom of the door right there but it's one of those metal ones and so I'm gonna leave it as just like that but yes if I was designing a place I would like that to match right Yes. Oh, I would love to. Linda, go over to Junk Monkey Paint Projects and put it in there. And uh, it's right here on Facebook. It's our page. It's called Junk Monkey Paint Projects. There are over 3,000 painters in there every single day that go ahead and post their pictures in there. And it is so, so inspiring. So if you want to see what like a certain color looks like, see what other people are doing with the paint, that is a great place to be. Just make sure you list the paint colors in the post when you go to post it. Because it's a Junk Monkey uh, paint sharing page, we want to see the colors listed, right? Because you guys tell me that you get mad when people post pictures and they're like you didn't tell us the color that you used right so there you go 
Robin, I do from time to time, depends. Like I've done a lot of different, uh, you know, customer pieces. For me personally, I love shabby distress, I love time worn. But you just know that if you wanna do anything that's not distressed looking, skip the part about using a medium grit sand block. And uh, at this point, just go get a sand block that's like a 220 or something to polish your piece off and seal. And don't do anything to like disturb your paint and distress it, right? So, so easy. Jen says, oh, she watches the, the videos all the time, but she can't get it just right our stuff girl you know sometimes we are our own worst critic okay so just keep practicing I know you'll get there and don't beat yourself up and just go with your piece because sometimes your piece just wants to give you back some some spontaneity right so enjoy the chips the crackles and all that good stuff and uh, yeah just just put some paint on it so easy and just keep practicing you will get better I promise all right guys so I'm gonna pop off of here I'll see you back again tomorrow tomorrow I think I'm gonna do my table so my table into my paint studio so join me in there tomorrow all right you're so welcome Gaylene all right and so I'm gonna finish up putting my last layer of the brightened poly that I showed you how to do on this piece and then I'm gonna take the before photo and the after photo I'll put them side by side so you guys can really see it as it all dries down and see what it looks like okay all right you guys take care see you tomorrow bye